We are not called to be political people. Christ did not come to tell us Christians to act based on political beliefs. Christ came to tell us to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. Christ did not come to create political beings. Christ came in order to create saints. When you look from the outside, the actions of two or more people can, can seem similar, indeed absolutely identical. They may join the same protest, they may sign the same petition, they may be saying the same things. But underneath that visible action of each person, the engine in the heart of each person, that engine that makes their words come out, is very different. One can join the same protest or one can say the same thing because that is one's political belief. But at the same time, a Christian can have the same action, can act in exactly the same way, not because of a political belief, but because that is the commandment, the teaching of Christ. And it is essential that we distinguish between these two, because behind Christ there is life, and behind politics there is death. This may seem extreme, and I want to explain to you why I'm saying this. Let us examine ourselves and condemn ourselves, and ever looking upon our own transgressions, humble ourselves before God and before everyone, never judging our brother, but loving him as our very self. By the power, action, and grace of His Most Holy Spirit. This is the essential distinction between politics and Christ. Politics turn human beings into categories. Politics erase our personhood and turn us into just groups, mobs, that can be influenced or manipulated. They dehumanize the persons within that category. Whereas Christ steps on any rule and any regulation in order to affirm our personhood. The world is fallen and it will be fallen until the end of times. And this is why I see no hope in politics, and I do not believe in politics. But I do not despair because Christ came for me and for you. Christ came for real, moving, breathing human beings. And although I do not believe that there is any good in me acting based on a political belief, there is all the goodness in the world hidden in my actions for the sake of my brother or my sister. the burning love of the Christians in ancient times for God and neighbor, that we may be their heirs and successors, not only in image but in true action. By the power, action, and grace of The solution can only be that through prayer and through deep, painful repentance, we learn to discern that engine behind the words of the people who speak to us, behind the actions of the people who are called to teach us anything that replaces Christ in your heart, anything that replaces the central place of Christ in your life can only be a demon. And this is why I believe that politics is used today by demons to break us apart to drive us far away one from the other. Any sort of separation, any sort of segregation of any kind cannot be an act of the one who calls us to be one, 
like he and the Father are one in the Holy Trinity, but can only be an act of the devil, because the devil wants to break us into bits and pieces, so then he can turn us against each other, because once we hate each other, love disappears. And who is love but God? Politics has been a tool for good and a tool for bad. But even the good of the politics is not Christian, because it does not come from Christ. And he who doesn't gather with him is wasteful. As for the bad of politics, look at the world today and see what happens in the world. Look at all the political voices today that play on our weaknesses to turn us against each other instead of calling us to be one, to become one, to love each other, to forgive each other, to listen to each other, to understand each other. Look that even that cross of Christ, Christ, being crucified, even that happened through politics. Because when they couldn't convince Pilate to crucify Christ for any other reason, they used politics. And they played on Pilate's fears and on his weakness. Oh, he calls himself a king, and therefore he is an enemy of Caesar. Do you hear politics behind that statement? And do you see what happens when Pilate does not follow his own heart, but acts based on fear, acts based on his human weakness? Politics has crucified Christ, and politics will crucify any voice that dares speak against it, against this prince of this world. I have no doubt about that. I am not optimistic about it in any way. But that doesn't mean that we should do nothing. That doesn't mean that we Christians, we the Orthodox Church, myself as a monastic and a priest, should do nothing. We should do and we should say everything that we can do and say, but not for a political belief, but because we follow Him who gave us the parable of the Good Samaritan, because we follow him who condemned the other two who did nothing, passed by that poor man fallen in the dust and did nothing because they followed the rules and the regulations of the day. Instead, he identifies himself with the one who takes care of the fallen one. We need to do, we need to act, we need to speak, because we believe and we follow the one who has healed those sick, paralytic men on Saturdays. Couldn't he have healed them on a Friday or on a Thursday? Of course he could have, because they were still in pain, they were still paralytic a day or two before that Saturday, but he purposely chose the Saturday to make the point that we should not be afraid of the rules, the rulers of the world when it comes to doing good, when it comes to acting good in the world. Don't allow politics to replace Christ in your heart. Do the good that you can do and speak the good that you can speak, not because of a political belief, but because you follow the one who ended up on a cross because or through politics and learn through repentance to discern what hides behind the actions and the words of the people around us. These are the three things we need to do now in order for us to overcome this separation, this brokenness which is so useful for the demons of the world, but so deadly for us as human Fill beings. Our hearts with the flames of love for thee, O Christ God. 
that being inflamed by this in heart, mind, and soul, we may love thee with all our strength and our neighbor as ourselves, and that keeping thy commandments, we may Don't allow politics to drive you. Don't allow politics to manipulate you into acting or into saying something. But at the same time, once you've understood the manipulation hidden behind politics, don't fall in the other trap of doing nothing or saying nothing, because that is still reactive. If I tell you to eat something and you do it, you do it because of me. But if I tell you to eat something and you don't do it because you don't want to follow my advice, I still determine your actions. You are still reacting. You are a reactive human being. The engine, the determining factor for your actions or your words is not within yourself, is not Christ but still that outside element that tells you to do something. If you do or if you don't, because you react for or against that element, you are still reacting. You are not free from that element. The only way to be free of that element is to let go of fear and let go of any voice around you and listen to that tiny but perfectly clear voice of Christ's love, that crucified love of Christ which speaks in any human heart. Step away from politics. Step out of this confusing whirlpool of opinions and emotions that has taken over the world today and still act still speak out, but not in reaction to politics, but as a follower of that tiny voice of love in your heart. And that will give you life, and that will give life to all the world. If you only knew how much care and how much prayer and love goes into me recording these videos, because the last thing I want to do is to offend anyone. The last thing I want is to hurt or scandalize anyone. And then I end up back into my cell and I end up back into the altar and I pray for everyone whom I've hurt because this is not my intention. I want all of us to be one. This is my prayer, this is my hope, this is why I am a monk and why I am a priest, because I want all of us to be one. Christ wants us to be one. And the way to that oneness can only be through truth and love. How can I be one with you if I don't speak about the things that torment the world today? And how can I be truthful and loving if I don't speak out of my heart and the truth as is revealed to me, to this sinful, weak human being that I am, in my heart by Christ? We shall never be one. We shall never find a way out of our own limited, selfish, fallen selves. We shall never be able to join this wonderful being, this oneness of humanity, which is Christ's body, the Church, if we don't learn to act exclusively based on Christ's teaching and His commandments. If I were to live the life that I would have liked to live, if I was somewhere in a cave with no concern and no relation, no interaction of any kind with the world, then I could tell you what I know to be the truth 101%, which is that everything falls and everything is saved depending on what happens in my heart. Everything falls because of me and my sinfulness, and everything can be redeemed and saved 
through my repentance because I am part of your humanity. And if I fall or if I stand, that affects you. But I do not live that ideal life. I am not in that cave. I am not removed from the world. And to pretend that I am and to act based on that pretense would be just that, pretense, would be fake, would be removed from the reality of the place, the time and the position in which God has placed me. Had I been in my cave, I would not be here recording these videos, but Christ has not yet blessed me to live that life. I live this life. I am involved in the world. I have a voice in the world and I depend on the world. Our monastery depends on the world. So the humble, real thing for me to do is to bow my head before the will of God and act in the realness of this situation instead of acting or based on a fake reality that doesn't exist. Thou didst bind thine apostles in the bonds of love, O Christ, and hast firmly bound us, thy faithful servants, to thyself, that we may fulfill thy commandments and have unfeigned love for one another. Through the prayers of the Theodokos, O only lover of man. May God bless all of us. May we find peace. May we find love. May we find our oneness in Christ. Amen.